Revealing who's really been pulling the strings as plot elements wrap up is a masterful card to play. Something that can scupper the present threat and previous hours invested if done wrong, or elevate the story tenfold. Get it wrong and this new character has a fraction of the time to make a mark, potentially usurping whoever you were loving to hate in the first place. Get it right though, and well, I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are the eight best meet the real villain moments in gaming history. Also note, newer game spoilers covered are for God of War 2018, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and Judgment. Number 8, Thor, God of War 2018. 2018's masterful soft reboot of God of War saw Kratos become an altogether deeper character. Where before there was a walking rage emoji who dismembered whatever was in his way, now Kratos was an impromptu father figure to Atreus, internally questioning whether or not he could even love or care for someone while going on a journey to scatter his partner's ashes. Cementing Kratos' new purpose, the journey takes you across different realms, up mountains and through enchanted forests, all while tales of Odin's reign across the land come from the decapitated but still living head of Mimir now sitting on your belt. While Odin stays firmly in the background, try to rest at Kratos' house post-credits and a scene will play where he and Atreus are woken in the middle of the night by a ferocious thunderstorm. Standing outside, barely visible while Kratos yells, Who are you? is the god of thunder himself, Thor, wielding Molnir to boot. We resume the next day as Atreus refers to everything as a dream, but taking into account the family dynamics of killing Odin's son and Thor's brother Balder, it's clear Atreus has inherited his mother's precognitive powers and this was a vision of what's to come. Number 7, Darth Vader, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. EA's reign with the Star Wars IP might have left slain bodies left and right, but one shining gem that managed to emerge almost completely unscathed save for an ad campaign spoiling its big villain reveal was Jedi Fallen Order. The archetypal Star Wars tale of a relative nobody Cal Kestis getting embroiled in a fight against the Empire played supremely well, thanks to being put together by the mighty Respawn Studios. While you'll spend time unveiling Cal's own history as a Padawan and finding out what happened between Jedi Sira Junda and her partner Trilla who's gone to the dark side, the biggest shock appearance comes in the final few moments. Masterfully done through audio alone, you'll start to hear that iconic breathing underneath the sounds of the supposed final battle against Trilla. Around the time this breathing becomes fully recognisable, Darth Vader himself walks into shot behind Trilla, cuts her down and goes full Jason Voorhees on Cal. The final stretch of the game is literally just surviving against his onslaught of force powers Rogue One style, until Cal and Sia can team up to delay him and escape. Number 6, Queen Mira. Gears of War. Way back during the run-up to Gears of War, we knew very little about the world of Serra. The debut trailer became an overnight sensation thanks to Gary Jewell's Mad World song, and as Marcus Phoenix and Delta Squad, you slowly repelled what portions of the Locust Horde you could. The game's main antagonist seemed to be General Ram, a fearsome slab of meat with a knife who guts your commanding officer and has you fight him on a moving train. Only the buck didn't stop with him. Soon after we hear for the first time the voice of the Locust themselves, it's the calm, calculated and older voice of Queen Mira. Only she's not a similarly grotesque Locust creature, but someone with a very human face. Unraveling who and what Queen Mira is would take over a decade of sequels and lore, but that first reveal of a human leading the Locust all along helped make Gears immediately iconic. Number 5, Atlas slash Frank Fontaine, Bioshock. A twist so seismic it's been covered to death, but if we're running down the most iconic and best villain reveals in gaming, it has to be on here. Yes, Bioshock's final boss fight is ultimately against a mutated Frank Fontaine, but that comes after the twist that upended the entire medium of video games. Three words, would you kindly. Set up to address the fact we tend to trust tutorial prompts and helper NPCs because why wouldn't we, actually using that against you was something that elevated storytelling in video games tenfold. As you now come face to face with Andrew Ryan and discover that helper character Atlas has been forcing you, a lab-grown ultra-aged child, to do his bidding all along, hanging all of it on the trigger phrase of would you kindly means that anything following those words has to be done. Ryan then orders you to kill him, which you then can't stop, and you go on to realise Atlas was Ryan's rival Frank Fontaine all along. All of this comprises one of the best narrative chicanes in gaming history, with you slap bang in the middle of it. Number 4, Meeting the Mole, Judgment. Everyone loves a good murder mystery, and a murder mystery that slowly unravels into a hunt the serial killer setup is one of the most entertaining variants around. Enter Judgment, Yakuza developer Ryo Gagatoku writing a more grounded, visceral tale of various people around Kamurocho having their eyes gouged out, as the killer known as the Mole is apparently responsible. As with any It Could Be Anyone style reveal, you'll be on your toes for the majority of this 25-hour runtime. 
The mole is treated as a semi-mythical figure, an assassin for the mob with the skills to fight their way out of any group scenario, responsible for brutal killings and not leaving behind a whisker of evidence. By the time comes that you know the mole is hunting a person in the room with you, the lights go out and they slowly stride into the building. I'm actually not going to spoil who the mole is because I heartily recommend you go play Judgment yourself, but seeing this person in the flesh is a highlight of the whole story. Number 3. Sovereign. Mass Effect. Looking back, the Bioware of the 2000s were an absolute juggernaut of RPG royalty. The Immaculate Knights of the Old Republic was one thing, but opting to funnel that game's profits into their own IP, birthing Mass Effect in the process, is something I'll always treasure them for. For the story then, Bioware went for a more subversive take on sci-fi in general, placing you as humanity's first special agent in an established galactic hierarchy of alien races. You were tasked with bringing down the Turian Seren, a defector who only your squad know murdered a former companion in cold blood. The whole thing is framed as taking down this one rogue element, save for teasers of a wider mythology slowly coming into view. Come the point you're about to sabotage one of Seren's facilities, a terrifying bug-like hologram appears and talks to you. Speaking with a dark, deep robotic tone, Shepard and the gang realize that the sovereign ship Saren has been referencing is actually a living synthetic overlord of space itself. Stating it and the other Reapers wiped out life in the galaxy 50,000 years ago, it's now on you as this plucky human nobody believes in to try and save everyone, including Saren. Number 2. Haytham Kenway and the Templars Assassin's Creed 3 the twist that arguably broke the entire franchise, going into Assassin's Creed 3 we'd just been served the awesome Minerva scene from AC2, an encounter where Desmond in the present realises there was a message given to one of his ancestors hundreds of years prior that the goddess Minerva knew he would eventually view through the Animus. It's a suitably insane reveal, but Assassin's Creed 3 then misdirected everyone by opening with you as Haytham Kenway, an English nobleman on the high seas of Northeast America. Ubisoft had some stones letting you stick with Haytham for a good few hours seeing him move like an assassin, fight like an assassin, and look to be mixing around with other members of the assassin order. Cut to a notable meeting with one Charles Lee, and Haytham instead welcomes him to the Templars. Turns out you'd been playing as a lead Templar this whole time, i.e. the main antagonist faction of Assassin's Creed 1, 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations. Haytham was actually the father of advertised character Connor and the achievement that pops is called How Do You Like Them Apples? Again, arguably the homogenization of good and bad forces right here would break the entire Assassin's Creed story for a good few years, but in the moment, this was brilliant. And number one, Sephiroth. Final Fantasy VII. There was a time, though it doesn't feel like it anymore, where Final Fantasy VII came across as this relatively straightforward tale of a soldier and his environmental activist friends going up against the evil Shinra Corporation. Yes, there were explosions and magic powers, but the very idea of this massive sordid villain named Sephiroth was barely shown in the trailers, largely omitted entirely from the biggest showcases of 1997 and 1998 because Square knew exactly what they were doing. Come the point in the game where you've reached Shinra HQ and been arrested by their president, the tone does a complete 180. Suddenly the doors to your prison cells are open, guards lay slain in all directions as blood trails off down the corridor hinting at where to go. Follow and you'll find the Shinra president now impaled, as Cloud and Tifa remark that Sephiroth is alive, noting that only he can use this oversized blade. From here, and it's hard to replicate the feeling of discovery today, the whole world of Final Fantasy VII was blown wide open. The hunt for Sephiroth spanned literal countries and continents in-game, and such a great character being the catalyst for the remaining 30 plus hours of the the story was a masterstroke. And those are my picks for the best meet the real villain moments in gaming history. Let me know your own favorites down in the comments below and please subscribe to the What Culture Gaming podcast. We have shows with myself, Jules, Josh and Benroy every single week. For now I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.